Today we're going to look at how to build a mini greenhouse from cheap picture frames that you get from the dollar store. There is nothing quite like finding a way to use cheap dollar store items to make something that can liven things up. Here, I show a relatively simple way to use dollar store picture frames for a magnificent ornamental terrarium or mini greenhouse. This is best used to highlight and accentuate some of your house plants and create a fun visual effect that will make your plants a source of attention and discussion. You may also use this as a greenhouse to jumpstart seedlings. My favorite use may be as a tidy indoor herb garden during the winter. Just place this terrarium near a sunny window and your herbs will thrive. I use the following items from the dollar store. Two 8x10 black picture frames, two 5x7 black picture frames, four 4x6 four black picture frames, duct tape, a black permanent marker. I also use a hot glue gun, which is relatively cheap, but can't be purchased at the dollar store. Although I note that the glue sticks for the gun actually can be purchased there. Also note that for a slightly larger terrarium, you can use 11 by 14 frames with 8 by 10 frames and then the four 5 by 7 frames if you want it just a little bit bigger than the one we're making in the video today. So first up, you're just going to open those picture frames and remove the backs and the glass. Now remember, it always has this little piece of paper in there that uh, kind of displays uh, a possible image that you could put in the frame, as well as this backing. So you just take it all out. And for now, we're going to take out that glass as well. We're going to end up cleaning up and putting it back in a little bit, but we want to put it back in a way that it'll stay put without that backing board on it. So next, when we have all that glass out, it's time to clean it. When see-through glass is the objective, a small finger smudge or dirt can be devastating to the entire presentation you're trying to achieve. So let's pull out the trusty window cleaner and some paper towels and make sure that we're happy looking through those glass frames. Although I chose fairly uniform black frames and was happy with the look that that created, you may want your terrarium to have a different color or you may need to cover up color inconsistencies between the frames that you're available to procure. Prior to putting the glass back in your frames, you should paint the frames whatever color you wish to paint them. Spray paint is probably the easiest, and Rust-Oleum will work on most frame surfaces, but the choice of paint and the color of paint is entirely up to you. All right, so now it's time for us to put that glass back into the frames. And to do so, we're gonna use a hot glue gun. So put a small dot of glue in each of the four corners of the frame. Now you want to carefully slide that piece of glass back into its place in the frame and push down, hopefully without smudging the glass that we just cleaned. <laughs> Hold this for about 30 seconds, pushing down, and then run the hot glue gun along the top of the glass and then along all of the sides of it. You're wanting to get that crack right between the glass and the frame to have glue go down in it and, and kind of above it. Adding a good layer of glue here is important, but you obviously don't want so much that it's going to run out onto the frame itself and distort the view. Now this will all hopefully prevent the glass from actually falling out later because it will be glued in and it will have that glue kind of on top of it to hold it in. Now you'll notice that there are actually some of these little tabs that were originally there to hold in the backing board on the frame and to hold the whole thing together. Now. This is a relatively cheap frame, so a number of these just kind of have broken off with, without doing much to them. But we do want to go ahead and flip down the ones that we have just as another layer of protection to keep that glass from falling out. 
Now it's worth noting that when I made this and what you're seeing in the video here is that I thought leaving the glass out during the actual construction of the greenhouse would be wise and that it would basically make things easier and I wouldn't break the glass and all of that. But once the terrarium was assembled, it became almost impossible for me to get that glass back in. In fact, I, I broke a piece of glass trying to do so. So I strongly advise that you first put the glass in before you do any of the actual construction in building the terrarium. That's not necessarily the way you'll see it here. You'll see some of the frames that I have stuck together even as I'm putting the glass in. But that's kind of why to explain it because I adapted as I was making this to kind of make it work. So next you're going to want to assemble the base of the terrarium. So you want to lay out the 8 by 10 frame on its side. And if you're using the larger version of this, this would be where you put down the 11 by 14. But to do what we're doing here, you put down the 8 by 10 frame on its side, such that the 10 inch side, the longer side, is lying parallel to the ground. And the 8 inch side is perpendicular to the ground. Now we want to line the seven inch side of the five by seven, the longer side of the five by seven, such that the frame is at a 90 degree angle to the original eight inch side. Now apply hot glue to one of the frames and press them together. Feel free to lay the frame down as I'm doing here to make it easier to work with and make sure that we actually get that lined in, up and that we're able to press it together. Make sure that the bottoms of the two frames are flush with the ground. There should be a gap on the top where the five by seven is taller than the eight by 10. Yes, I know, the math does not make sense as eight inches should be more than seven inches. But in this case, the five by seven, the seven inch side is actually gonna be a little bit higher than the eight inch side of the eight by 10. And uh, let's just go with it. <laughs> Other than that, they should line up all the way down. Uh, so if you, if you see, we want it all the way to be just aligned. And you want to hold it in place for a while. Uh, about a minute uh, would be a, a safe low side. If you want a more resilient terrarium, you can actually use corner brackets, like metal brackets that you would screw into the frames together. But these are certainly not a necessity, not something that you have to use. And I'm not using them. Uh, just know that hot glue can break apart. You might be fixing this in time where you're adding more hot glue to it. Or, you know, particularly if you're going to be moving this around a lot, you might, look, might want to look at the brackets. But if it's going to stay pretty stationary, you're not going to mess with it much. The hot glue will do more than enough. Finally, you want to attach the other 8x10 to the open side of the 5x7s. And this will ultimately form this complete box. So now, note that the outside of all of the frames are facing outside. That way you have kind of a uniform look and everything looks finished um, on the outside because it, it is made to be that outside of the frame. Now you want to take two of the four by six frames and line them up with their six inch sides parallel to one another. And then we'll glue those frames together. Now you see here I'm actually doing it such that I have them standing up on top of each other. Uh, to do that, but it's still going to be that longer side that we're gluing together, that six inch side that we're gluing together. And then you just want to hold these together too for a while to let that ultimately set up. Um, I'd suggest that we again do several minutes here. Uh, it's, it's not an exact science, but you want this set up pretty well. And since we're going to be doing other stuff with the roof, I'd just say go ahead and hold it for you know, three to five minutes or so and, and get it all set up very well. Now you're going to want to take the other two uh, four by sixes, do the exact same thing. And when you've got the two of them ready, it's time to lean them up as if they are the roof 
of the terrarium. And this isn't an exact science. You might be juggling a little to get them to stay up there when you're first starting, but get them up there and then put a piece of duct tape across them to hold them together. Now, this is again a place where when I was originally doing this and what you see in the video, I didn't do it quite the way I'm now suggesting. So I originally tried to glue the bottoms of these down so that it'd be easier to ha not have them keep moving when we're trying to deal with the top. But the problem is, depending on your preferences, you might actually want the terrarium to have a lift off lid so that the roof of the terrarium can be lifted and you can put your plants down in it. So that's actually the way I would recommend that you do this. So you don't necessarily ever want to actually glue this terrarium roof on, but it is a way of getting it to hold still when you're trying to do other things. And once again, hot glue breaks apart fairly easily. So if you do want to glue it on and then <laughs> do your duct taping and then take it off, that would work. Another thing that you could do that I didn't take advantage of here that really would help is just have another person help you. If you have someone help you hold these together while you're putting the duct tape on, it shouldn't be an issue at all. If not, then you might kind of run into a problem where you need three hands and you only have two. Uh, so find a creative way to deal with that. The hot glue is a way that I did. You might be able to use other tools to do it as well, or ultimately another person. But in any case, once you have it together, you have this tape. Now, depending what you decided on your color, uh, let's say hypothetically you wanted a blue frame for your terrarium. And so you're going to go through and paint all of these frames blue. Well, you can use blue duct tape here, or you can actually paint your duct tape to stick with the Dollar Tree theme, and since I'm using a black color scheme for my frame, I actually colored just standard gray silver duct tape with a Sharpie marker so that I'm sticking with all stuff from the Dollar Tree. And despite the fact that it was a little tedious going through and coloring that, I have an effective look that looks like a black top on this terrarium. I think it looks very nice, even if it was a little bit of an odd way that I got to it. But you can go ahead and paint your duct tape or get colored duct tape. They have that available now, and I've got a link below if you wanted to, to find that somewhere. But um, overall, lots of ways you can do it. Now the next thing is you might notice that <laughs> though we've created two sides of a roof, there are still the two other sides, the, the ones that would be flush with the side of the terrarium that don't actually have anything in them. If you're actually wanting to use this as a greenhouse where you're trying to get that warming effect, you might want to seal these sides a little bit. And my suggestion to do that and sticking with the Dollar Tree theme or Dollar Store theme is to use, they have this thing called chopping mats. Now I know sometimes they're in my stores and sometimes they aren't. So you might have to look around a little bit to find them or go onto the webpage, which I'll, I'll put a link below to where you can find the chopping mats on the webpage. But um, these are basically, they're not full cutting boards in that they aren't that thick. They're more, but they're, they're to be used like cutting boards, just kind of as a protective surface for a counter when you'd be doing chopping on it. And it's a thinner, it's not as thin as say, if you were using a, a laminating paper or uh, transparency or something like that, it's not like that thin, it's a little bit thicker than that. It has a little bit of bulk to it. And it becomes a pretty good thing to, to use for purposes like this, because it is just sturdy enough to, uh, to hold up and provide a good cover and just transparent enough not to really affect the look of this too much. In fact, as you can see here, it kind of has the, the cloudy 
uh, look, kind of a, a, a clouded glass look that you can achieve on these sides, which I think actually looks pretty decent. Although for my purposes in my terrarium, I left it off. But I wanted to show you here, you basically just hold up the sheet to that triangle, or if you have a removable roof, go ahead and take that triangle down and just trace the outline of what you need for the triangle onto your chopping mat and then cut it. And you'll want to cut it a little bit larger than what the opening will be so that there's an area that can fasten to the sides of the frame. And then you'll get that hot glue gun out again and just glue that on. And I'd hold for a couple minutes to make sure it's pressed firmly down against that frame and that the glue is set. And now you'll have that, that frosted glass. That's what I was looking for, frosted glass look uh, on the side of your terrarium. So finally, what you do is add whatever plants that you would want. And uh, there are many different ways you can use this. And if you have that lift off lid, you can just set them down in there. Otherwise you can lift the entire thing and have it come down on them. And you can have this be something that you are starting plants in, that you're trying to grow to get that greenhouse effect. Or really what I think the best purpose of this is really is just as a, a great opportunity to highlight some favored plants and so i put some uh, flowers in here just to show kind of some some bright color here and show maybe what you can do and i'm, I'm sure that the there is no limit on the creativity of ways you could use a terrarium like this to display plants so i hope you enjoyed this take if you have other thoughts on better things, cheaper things, more sturdy things that we could do with this terrarium model, please tell us in the comments below and, and we'll possibly do an update video if there's something phenomenal out there that you've thought of. And if you do try this sometime, also comment below and, and let me know how it goes. So I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you are not already subscribed. And if you do like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Uh, we really appreciate your support.